Welcome into another episode of Locked On Phillies. The Phils take game one of the NL wildcard series against the Miami Marlins. Zach Wheeler dazzles. We'll break it all down. Plus, the offensive attack and how balanced it was for the Phillies last night. It was great to see. So how do they close out game two? And who's the most important player? I think you have a guess. But we'll talk all about all of it on today's episode of Locked On Phillies. You are Locked On Phillies. Your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is Locked On Phillies. I'm Connor Thomas, your host. Thank you so much for checking us out. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Please make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube, all that good stuff. You're not going to want to miss every single piece of our Red October content here on Locked On Phillies. It's been a great start. We're going to get into that in just a second. Of course, uh, you can hear some of my work here on um, Locked on Phillies, but also on 97.5 The Fanatic on the radio, NBC Sports Philadelphia on the television side. Uh, a couple of years I've been a credentialed Philadelphia Phillies media member, just to give you the resume there. Today's episode is brought to you by Fandle, and Fandle makes every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit Fandle.com slash locked on to get started. So go ahead and check out our friends over at FanDuel. I'll tell, more, I'll tell you more about them a little bit later on in the episode. But yes, the Phils win game one of the NL wildcard series over the Marlins, a four to one victory. This game had everything, folks. Well, except the home run. I mean, we looked at this Philadelphia Phillies team and we've worried at points this season, where's the power going to come from? When are they going to show it off? And then they did. And then in game one of their playoff run against the Marlins, no, neither team left the yard, which in Citizens Bank Park, with the weather like it was yesterday, I mean, it was a nice night. Ball was flying. They just uh, saw two good pitching performances, one by Jesus Lazardo for the Marlins, one by Zach Wheeler of the Philadelphia Phillies. We're going to get into the offensive side of this in a second, but let's start with Zach Wheeler. I mean, he was absolutely outstanding yesterday, the player of the game for the Philadelphia Phillies. Easily, he went six and two-thirds of five hit ball, only one earned run, struck out eight, walked none it was a monstrous performance by Zach Wheeler he was so darn good like uh, it's hard to put into words how good Zach Wheeler was in game one of the wild card series and this is nothing new right Zach Wheeler has been an outstanding pitcher in game ones in his postseason career for the Phillies I believe it's a 0.45 ERA in game one Oh, my goodness. Like, how do you stop that? How do you beat that? How do you beat the Philadelphia Phillies? And that's why it's so key, right? Now, when, not if, when, because I'm speaking in positives here, uh, the Philadelphia Phillies advance and move to deeper rounds of the postseason. For NLDS play, Zach Wheeler not going to be ready for game one, it seems. It'll probably be somebody else. Rangers for us, Tom Walker, I don't know. And they'll, they'll get the ball. But like, think about it in a deeper series, too. I mean, it's huge in this one. In a three-game series, winning game one is already forcing a team into an elimination type of situation. The Marlins have their backs against the wall tonight, and that's such a huge advantage. Zach Wheeler being able to start off a series as good as he's been is insane. I mean, this guy is a monster. His spots were great. His velocity was great. His movement was great. The pitch decisions between him and JT Romito were outstanding. To strike out eight is great. I mean, Luis Arise was held 0 for 3 to start the game. He's batting over 340 this year in the regular season, and the Phillies shut him down. Something interesting to note, by the way, Arise really, really gimpy in last night's game. I don't know what his status is yet for tonight's contest in game two and 808 start. You can listen to every pitch of the Phillies hometown broadcast of that game. By the way, the Phillies hometown radio broadcast on the Sirius XM app. Just go to the SXM app and search Phillies. You'll be able to listen to game two. But I don't know what his status is for game two. He played the entirety of game one, but he got on. He got a hit in his fourth at bat of the game, and it was the ninth inning, and you just saw that he was not ready to move at all. Or actually, maybe it was the eighth. It was the eighth inning, yes. And he was not ready to move whatsoever. I, I, like, 
that injury would be huge for the Miami Marlins. But let's talk about the positives for the Phillies. You don't ever root for injury, wishing the best for a rise. You want to beat teams at their best, and the Marlins are at their best when a rise can play. So they're a better team for it and hoping that he's okay and uh, not injured and you can go ahead and beat the Marlins at their full strength. But Zach Wheeler was outstanding last night. I, I can't overestimate. There's no way to overestimate how much Wheeler has meant to this team. From last year's run to regular seasons of the past, Cy Young caliber pitching, being your number one when Aaron Nola proved he was too inconsistent to be that guy. And I mean, it's just amazing that the Philadelphia Phillies got Zach Wheeler. If you remember back when Zach Wheeler first signed with the Philadelphia Phillies, the Mets allowed him to walk. They didn't go ahead and try and match the offer by the Philadelphia Phillies because they did not believe that Zach Wheeler was worth the offer that the Philadelphia Phillies put out there. Now, keep in mind, this is the same offseason that Patrick Corbin was one of the big names and was tied to the Phillies, and they were looking at it, and all of a sudden, Corbin ends up in Washington with the Nationals. So you go ahead and you go get Zach Wheeler. The Philadelphia Phillies bring him in, and he's on a great contract, valued compared to what he's producing for you. I mean, it's a steal for a top-level guy like Zach Wheeler. He eats innings. Uh, he throws deep in the games. He has great strikeout stuff. He has great makeup. He shows up in the big moments. Like, what more could you want from Zach Wheeler? And he's among some of the great Philadelphia Phillies pitchers already in postseason performance. His name's up there with Hamels, Carlton, Lee, Halliday. Like, Zach Wheeler is one of the most underrated superstars in baseball. When you talk about the top pitchers, sure, he'll be mentioned, but it'll be an afterthought after names like, I don't know, um, Corbin Burns, Max Scherzer, Garrett Cole, Justin Verlander, Blake Snell, like guys that have been really, really good this year and have been good for years, uh, Kershaw, guys like that, the top all-time great type arms. You see those guys and you're like, okay, that all makes sense. And then Zach Wheeler's always kind of an afterthought, like, oh yeah, Wheeler's pretty good too. No, he's not just pretty good. He's amazing. And I'll be honest, He's going to go down as one of the great free agent signings in the history of the Philadelphia Phillies. All he's done since he's come here is win, win, win. Put you in a position to be a dominant team when he's on the mound. Uh, help out the bullpen. Help out the team in big-time spots. He's clutch. Uh, like, how many more good things can I say about Zach Wheeler? That's the tough thing, right? We look at all these other teams and we say, okay, you face the Diamondbacks, you got to face Gallon. You face the um, – I'm just trying to run through. You face the Braves. You got to face Strider. You got to face Free. I mean, you face the Dodgers. You got to, their rotation isn't great this year, but you got to get through Kershaw. I know he hasn't been a great playoff performer, but every team's got their guy. They got that top number one arm. All these playoff teams are going to have a guy that you throw out there. It's like, how do we find a way to beat this guy? And I don't think we take enough account in the fact that Zach Wheeler is that guy for the Phillies and he should terrify other teams the rest of the postseason. Now, you're not done yet. Of course, you got to continue to win. you got to lock up another win in this wild card series to advance to the NLDS. So the job is not finished. But what Zach Wheeler did last night got you halfway there. The Phils take game one. They win four to one. It was a great victory. Defensively, the Phillies were good. Pitching-wise, Zach Wheeler. And the bullpen was great as well. I mean, Zach Wheeler was awesome. And he also sets it up to the point where the bullpen hasn't doesn't have to do too much. So you get in a situation where – Instead of what Lazardo did, which is four innings of eight hit, three earned run ball, the Phillies now only have to cover the seventh and eighth, well, part of the eighth and ninth. Part of the seventh, sorry, eighth and ninth is what you had to get because Alvarado came in to close out the seventh and he had the eighth or part of the eighth. Hoffman comes in to close that out and then Kimbrell gets the ninth. And here are the numbers from the bullpen. Alvarado, one inning pitched, one hit allowed, two strikeouts. Hoffman, one third of an inning, clean. Nothing else on the stat sheet. Craig Kimball, one inning pitched, gets the save, one hit allowed, no earn, no walks, no strikeouts. The Phillies, 10 strikeouts, no walks. They're the first team to do that since the Phillies did that last year against the Braves in their closeout game in the NLDS in game four. So an outstanding pitching performance, an outstanding defensive performance, insanely good bullpen management by Rob Thompson, exactly what I wanted them to do. Alvarado when you need him. Hoffman to go with the matchup. Kimball to close it down, wipe your hands, we're good to go. That's why I got the victory shirt on today. That's why hopefully I'll be wearing it again tomorrow. And for all those who didn't have faith in Rob Thompson's bullpen management, he did a damn good job last night.
Phillies are up one nothing in this series. It's great to see. Coming up, we're going to talk about the offensive side of the game. What did the Phillies do at the plate that was so, so good that helped them hang for and do what the Marlins could not, scratch runs across? Well, it led to them being up one nothing. a big part of it, and we'll discuss as we continue Lock on Phillies. I want to tell you about FanDuel, though. Uh, snap into action. This NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers, you're going to get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That $5 bet doesn't have to win. It doesn't have to lose. No, you just place a $5 bet. And win or lose, you're going to get $200 in bonus bets. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's absolutely no better time to get in on the action than right now. I mean, you got baseball playoffs going on. You got the basketball season about to start. Hockey's about to start. You've got football starting to round into action. I mean, we're a month into football season, the NFL season. So go ahead and check out FanDuel. The app's super easy to use. Like, it's really such an easy interface. You can find all the bets you need to. And there's a wide, a wide range of them to find spreads, player props. You got parlays, over-unders, all that good stuff that helps you maximize your winnings. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, let's jump into the offensive side of the game last night for the Philadelphia Phillies. And again, no homers for the Phils in this one. No homers for the Marlins in this one. The ball stayed in the yard. For both teams, Nick Castellanos had a double that kind of looked like a triple. That was about as close as anyone got to rounding the bases in one swing. But it was a, oh, by the way, we'll talk about Nick Castellanos in a second. What a game from him and what a, uh, <laughs> what a bit of a celebration by him. But there were a lot of things that the Phillies needed to do to get going in this game. They ended up with 11 hits and four runs. I just want to run down the box score for you before we go through exactly how everything played out. But Kyle Schwarber. One for four. Trey Turner, two for three. A great game with a walk on top of that. Alec Bohm, one for four with an RBI. Bryce Harper, one for four. Run scored. Jay Triamuto, one for four. Run scored. Nick Castellanos, two for four with an RBI. Bryson Stott, one for four with a run scored and an RBI. Christian Pache, one for two with an RBI. Johan Rojas, one for three with a run scored. I mean, everybody on the team that started in the game contributed either a run scored or an RBI besides Trey Turner and Kyle Schwarber. And those guys had three hits between the two of them. Every one of the Philly starters had a hit. Nine players on the team having a hit is insane to look at. And it's, I believe, the first time the Philadelphia Phillies have ever done that. You have to remember, two years ago, you were looking at a pitcher having to hit in the National League. You weren't going to go have nine players get hits with the pitcher in there unless you had a pinch hitter. And even if a pinch hitter got a hit, then you were looking at every other player on the team had to get some type of hit and contribute some way. Everyone contributed. Even Brandon Marsh, who came in as a pinch hitter, he went over to. Uh, I mean, he contributed a little bit in the outfield and everything there, just locking down, making you look good as a defensive replacement for Christian Pache, too. I mean, Pache was good, but you bring in Brandon Marsh, the lefty, as a pinch hitter. I told you that was going to happen. Told you Marsh was going to pinch hit for Pache at a point in that game. He did. Rob Thompson handled that perfectly. I mean, it all went great. So that's the, the overarching, like, balance approach, and that's how you end up with 11 hits and four runs. But the way they went about doing it, they scored in timely manners, too. So they started off in the bottom of the third. Now, they missed an opportunity. The Phils were still not great with runners in scoring position last night. That's something they got to be better at tonight. In the future, as they progress through this red October. But in the bottom of the third, they finally broke through. Alec Bohm had a nice two out RBI. It doubled down the left field line, scoring Johan Rojas. Rojas, who walked it off to send you into the postseason. Uh, yeah, he scores the first run of the postseason. Love what that kid is doing at the plate and on the base pass right now, and defensively, of course. Then the bottom of the fourth is where the Phillies really started to figure it out. Bryson Stott hit an RBI single to score uh, JT Romuto. Nick Castellanos unfortunately got thrown out at home there. It was not a great decision by Dusty Wathen to send him. All right, whatever. Christian Pache hit an RBI single also in the same inning. Score Bryson Stott, who had the RBI earlier. I mean, they went to work in the fourth inning. You're sitting there 3 nothing in the fourth. Wheeler's dealing, and you're like, okay, just got to hold on and battle. It got quiet there in the middle innings. Top of the seventh, Brian De La Cruz had an infield single. They hit the Alec Bohm. Bohm probably should have made a better play on it. Solid effort, just didn't get the ball over to first in time as he was falling over. Josh Bell scored. 
Um, Jake Berger moved up to second. The Phillies worked out of that one. Some timely pitching uh, by Jose Alvarado there in the seventh to get out of it. And then in the bottom of the eighth, this was a huge, huge moment in the game. Nick Castellanos hit an RBI double to left field. Bryce Harper scores. He runs through a stop sign by Dusty Wath and it moves Nick Castellanos up to third on the throw. They probably should have made the throw to third because Castellanos would have been gunned out. But uh, anyway, he didn't score, so I guess it doesn't matter for the Marlins, and they were trying to take that extending run off the board. A 3-1 to one game is much different than a 4-1 to one game heading into the top of the ninth. It was huge. And Nick Castellanos had the celebration of the night. So Nick Castellanos, he goes ahead and he uh, rounds the second on a double earlier on in the game. And what he does is he throws up a motion like this to the uh, Philadelphia Phillies dugout. If you're not watching on YouTube, you should be. But uh, he puts up his ring thing. Now, everybody in Philadelphia, 100% when it happened, thought that Nick Castellanos was flipping the bird <laughs> to the Philadelphia Phillies dugout. Uh, I don't know why he would be doing that, but everyone legitimately thought he was flipping the bird. Obviously, he was showing his ring finger because he wants to win a ring. And he said after the game, why would I flip off my teammates? But it was such a funny moment. He did the Phillies, like, uh, the celebration, the marble celebration from Major League, where he uh, bounced his hands up and down and then immediately went into the ring finger. And everyone's like, did he just actually flip the – it was just the vibes have never been higher for the Philadelphia Phillies than they were in that moment. So that was a great thing to see. This team clearly loves playing with and for each other, and that's an awesome, awesome thing to see. So Nick Castellanos was great. I'm trying to think offensively. The player of the game for me, um, I'm looking down the stat sheet, and I mean, Trey Turner, two for three is huge, but he didn't have a runner or an RBI. Nick Castellanos, two for four with an RBI, and that's pretty darn big. Uh, it, I'd probably have to give it to Castellanos, but Turner was a huge part of this too. It's Castellanos, 1A, Turner, 1B. Trey Turner was everything you expected him to be. Two stolen bases in the game last night. He's now gone 32 straight bases this year without getting thrown out. I mean, he hasn't been thrown out stealing in a Phillies uniform. That's impeccable. It's the greatest streak in the history of baseball. No other player has gone 30 straight stolen bases without getting caught. Never. And the next size is Chase Utley, I think, with like 27 or something, or maybe it's 23. Either way, Trey Turner's on a remarkable base stealing tear right now. And people are a little upset with him. Like, why is he not stealing more bases in the regular season? Well, I mean, who cares as long as he's not getting caught and you get in the postseason you're winning games. It was great work by him last night. And there are some guys that need to step up, like Kyle Schorber, one for four, could be a little bit better. Brandon Marsh, if he gets the opportunity tonight, yeah, you got to look at him as a guy who needs to do better at the dish. Uh, I'm trying to look at JT Romito, Bryce Harper, not their best, best games. Bryce Harper, though, made a great decision and scored the uh, go-ahead, well, not the go-ahead, but an extending run in the bottom of the eighth that really made you feel comfortable about this game. It, I have nothing to complain about when it comes to this game. The Phillies did everything they need to do to take care of business, and they got to do it again tonight. So coming up, we're going to jump in a little bit to tonight's contest, and we're going to discuss game two of the NL Wild Card Series as the Phillies look to knock off the Miami Marlins, take care of business, move on to the second round of the playoffs in the NLDS and match up with the Braves you got to take care of business tonight. How will they do it? I'll tell you on the other side as we continue Locked on Phillies. First of all, I want to tell you about my friends over at Bird Dogs, all right? Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly, like, sculpted feel, okay? Bird Dog shorts, they do the exact same thing, and they're so much – a better fit than any competitors in the market. They're not stiff or anything. They're not restricting cotton. No, they're, uh, they've got cloud knit fabric. Doesn't that just sound comfortable? It, trust me, it feels comfortable too. And that way you get a waist slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Uh, they also have anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. They're functional for any occasion. You might wear them to golf. I have done that before. I've worn bird, uh, worn bird dogs out on the course. I shoot really well when I'm wearing them. You might wear them on a date. A little evening dinner, uh, pool, workout, ball game, anything, the beach. You can wear them anywhere. You can wear them to work. They're that nice looking of short and that comfortable. So go ahead and check them out. They're amazing. Uh, they've got some free gifts to go ahead and give you out too. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB or enter promo code locked on MLB at checkout and you'll get a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. 
I absolutely promise you. All right, game two. We're moving on. Wiping it. Game one's behind us. Doesn't matter anymore. It's time to go back to work. The Phillies minus 155 favorites in this one tonight. They were minus 150 favorites last night. Bigger favorites in tonight's game. The pitching matchup. Aaron Nola is taking on Braxton Garrett. Let's look at the numbers, right? Well, we know what we've got from Nola. He's up and down, but a 4-4-6 ERA doesn't really show you how good he can be when he's at his best. A 12-9 record, uh, I mean, shows you he's been inconsistent. But 202 strikeouts, side 14th in the league. Uh, 1.15 whip, it's good for 16th in the league. I mean, he's still a very good pitcher. And his win-loss at home, 6-3. and three. His ERA at home, 3-2-9. He's much better at Citizens Bank Park than he is on the road. That's a great thing for the Philadelphia Phillies. He's going to be facing lefty Braxton Garrett. Another lefty, which means you're probably going to see Christian Pache. You're probably going to see the same lineup as you saw last night. Now, Braxton Garrett's 9-7 and seven record-wise in the regular season with a 3-6-6 ERA, 156 strikeouts, and a 1-1-5 whip. Now, you look at that and you say, okay, 123 innings, 156 strikeouts, or sorry, that's against the National League. Uh, regular season, 159 innings and 156 strikeouts. He's a guy that's not going to strike out as many as Lazardo. So you can go ahead and attack him a little bit more. Here's what scares me. He's 6-3 and three away from home, and he's 2-8-5 in the ERA column in away games. That's just – he's better in away games for whatever reason. He feels comfortable on the road. Now, clearly, Lazardo couldn't get a rhythm going. And the ballpark had something to do with that. The bank, the environment that you have at Citizens Bank Park definitely made a difference to Jesus Lazardo last night and the Marlins players. It made a difference at the dish for them. A couple of guys had some very uncharacteristically bad at-bats for them, including Jazz Chisholm. Did not look great last night. So you've got that that you can account for. This is not your normal away game experience. But Braxton Garrett's a good pitcher. He's a good lefty. He's another guy that's going to be tough on left-handed hitters. So you're going to need a concerted team effort. Trey Turner, Alec Bohm, Nick Castellanos, JT Ramuda are going to have to step up and have more big games. I'd also like to see the lefties go to work a little bit. Bryce and Stott, uh, Bryce Harper show off a little power. Kyle Schwarber show off a little power. I think we get a shore bomb tonight. Maybe it doesn't start the game, but I think at some point he's going to run into one. He rises to the occasion. That would be big, and I also think we're going to get a big Bryce Harper at bat at some point in this game. So that's the key, but – the number one most important player for the Philadelphia Phillies tonight is Aaron Nola. Can he go out and be good Aaron Nola? Can he go out in front of the home crowd and dominate? Can he take some momentum from what Zach Wheeler just did and say, no, I'm not letting you up off the mat. I'm giving you just as tough, if not a tougher day in the box as what Wheeler gave you last night. And I'm going to give you six or seven innings of strong two earn runs or less ball to keep my team exactly where they need to be to walk on to the next round. It's Nola. It's Nola Day. I mean, you have to have faith in Aaron Nola if you think this Phillies team is going to advance further in the postseason. And tonight, the Phillies put their faith in their longest tenured pitcher. Okay. Hey, you should have nothing but confidence in Aaron Nola because that's all we can offer. I mean, it's not the time to talk about the regular season or the inconsistencies. In big moments, big pitchers rise to the occasion. He did it last year. So have faith that he can do it this year. I'm not going in with like expectations of, okay, he's going to be great. I have confidence that he can be great. And that's all you can really ask for with Aaron Nola this year. Just go in with an open mind and hope that he proves you correct. I, I hope he does because this Phillies team does not want to lose this one and be forced into an elimination game in game three with who Ranger Suarez on the mound. Like, and Suarez has been good, but this is your next best pitcher. That's why he's going in the second game of the postseason. Close him out now. Don't give him a sense of hope. And with Nola on the mound, the offense is going to have to create more than four runs. Not that Nola's going to give up more, but we'd feel a lot more comfortable as a fan base if you saw the Phillies put up five, six, seven, cash in on some early opportunities. Feel very good about that. So a uh, little bit more nervous about tonight's game than I was about last night's, but I still feel good about the overall quality of this team over the Marlins. It was a great win. Hopefully we're popping some champagne tonight. I got the victory shirt on. I'm keeping it on. It's going to be a fun game. 8.08 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can listen to every pitch of the Phillies hometown radio broadcast of their matchup with the Marlins in the NL Wild Card Series on the SXM app, the Sirius XM app. Just go to that and search Phillies. Thank you for checking us out. Thank you for being along for the ride. It's a great start to Red October. We're hyped up. We're going to continue to be because Aaron Nolan is going to go out there and shove tonight. I feel it. 
feel very good about this one. And um, yeah, fingers crossed, right, folks? <laughs> Hopefully we're talking about moving on to the NLDS, but that's all for today's episode. Please make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing, all that good stuff. And I'll talk to you next time on the next episode of Lock On Phillies.